Hello and welcome to the Chapter 2 podcast on Section 5. Uh, this is just going to be a basic overview of the periodic table. Oops. There we go. Okay, the periodic table, you know, as more became known about the particles and structure and stuff, uh, an arrangement of all the elements put together was created, known as the periodic table. The modern table is based upon increasing atomic number, but we'll talk more um, in a couple chapters about the history of the periodic table and its evolution to the modern form that we know now. Basically, the way the periodic table works is that similar properties, uh, elements with similar properties are put in vertical columns, also known as groups, and periods are horizontal rows um, as the, the uh, number of protons or atomic number increases. Um, what you see down here are some of the some of the symbols and the atomic numbers and you can kind of see um, some of the repetitions and stuff okay so I noticed like the the colored ones tend to be very similar in their nature so this is why some of them are grouped together and others are grouped either you know in 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 each on each other uh, next to each other or right below depending upon the properties themselves so this is our modern table. Um, the other thing you should keep in mind here are where things are in the periodic table with respect to metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. So this staircase you see here on the right side of the table represents the separation point between metals, nonmetals, and then we have our metalloids, which ha are on the staircase. Um, metals tend to have um, they tend to be shiny or have luster. They can be um, ductile and malleable. Um, they conduct electricity uh, when molt in the molten form or by themselves. They're good conductors of heat as well. The only nonmetal that's on the left hand side is hydrogen. Um, nonmetals can basically are basically opposites in terms of properties. Also, metals are almost always solids, with the exception of mercury. Um, Nonmetals can, can exist in any three forms of matter. They do not conduct electricity well. Uh, they are not lustrous. They are not ductile or malleable. And then we have metalloids, which have some properties of metals and some properties of nonmetals, depending upon the element itself. So again, here's a summary of what I just said in terms of met where metals nonmetals and metalloids are. Um, in terms of the periodic table itself, depending upon the table, it will have um, different um, information in the table. Uh, on the AP exam, you're basically just going to get the symbol, the atomic number, and the average mass or atomic weight. Some other tables will have more information on it, like boiling point, melting point, and so on. So some periodic tables will give you a lot of information, but uh, for our purposes, we're just going to get the three basics. Um, within the periodic table, there are some special names for groups. Um, group 1A, if you see this first column here, are the alkali metals. The alkali metals are the most reactive metals on the table. The alkaline earth metals are the second most, and they're in group 2A. Okay, These numbers at the top of the column are different ways to refer to groups. So that's one. Uh, the group 6A, or sometimes referred to as the oxygen family, is also listed here. But the other two that are more important are the halogens, which are here, and then the noble gases. The noble or rare gases, or sometimes they're called inert gases, these are uh, gases that are stable and almost never combine to form compounds. And we'll talk more about why that is uh, in future chapters. That's it.